This is uh, my prototype of a floating router lathe. I made it out of a scrap that I had around. It was an old entertainment center made out of chipboard and I just cut it up to make the panels so that I could find out if this concept even worked. I had no idea whether it would or not. First thing I had to do was I had to put a piece of uh, thick chipboard on there to bring my lathe out to the edge so that I could get the box for the floating router lathe close enough to it. I've got a strip back here with some shims underneath it to adjust the height right now and had when I put the indexing wheel on the on the lathe I ran into a problem with the the headstock or the the motor mount coming in contact with this plate so I had to do some butchering there but the idea wasn't to make a finished machine it was to try and come up with something that I could play with and uh, find out if it actually worked I'll get it going and round up that piece of wood and then uh, put an eight-sided uh, finish on it like you would for a tool handle or something like that Alright, that finishes the rounding over part. Now I'm going to take out a couple of my shims on the other side over here to lower this plate down somewhat enough to put the uh, eight sided flutes down the side of the uh, wood. All right, here's the finished piece. Uh, not nearly as good as I hoped it would be, but uh, it's uh, it's a start. It the machine works. It cuts wood in a straight line, and 
On the other side over here, I'll show you in a second, I've got a place where I can put some templates on there to cut uh, anything I want, anything. I want to try and cut a ball on this, which I think would be really neat, like if uh, you wanted to make a croquet set or something like that. I know I can make the mallets easy enough on this, but I don't know about the balls yet. So I'll, uh, I'll show you this template side and we'll see how it goes after that. All right, this is this is what I'm trying to do for the guides for the router. And I've just got some wood here. I've got a bunch of shims under here right now. And I mic these to see how thick they are and I can make an adjustment and raise and lower this or you can raise one end if you want to cut a slope or tilt and just tighten tighten up the knot. Another thing I have is I have a piece that's a little shorter than this that is actually about the same thing except this level would take the router to below. You could cut all the way through the piece with this and it's designed so that I can put a uh, bolt like a circle jig or something to that. I can take this and bolt this to the to the top of that. Run my run my guide along here, come up over the top, and I'll be cutting a, a ball on the other side. Of course it'd be a bigger scale than this. Another thing I got is this is just a piece of Luan that I cut that will go over the top. Uh, you see guys that have things like this, they want to make table legs and templates of that sort. You can take your, uh, put this in here, take your table leg template, template, slide that in, and clamp this up to get it where you want it. And then uh, once you get something you really like, you can just run a piece of, uh, bead of epoxy along there and you'll have a, a permanent template. So that's about it. Other than the uh, indexing jig, I'll show you that a little bit. This is my indexing jig. It's just got a little slide on it. If people are interested, I'll show you how I made it. But I do want to thank Matthias Wandel at woodgears.ca for the use of his free uh, gear program that uh, he has a free version and he sells a version if you want to really get into gears and uh, I use that to make the template for my indexing wheel so I thank him for that.